Hey everybody, today I thought I'd make a quick video about why it is I invest in silver. I've seen a lot of people posting these videos on YouTube and I really enjoy watching them. So I thought I might as well throw my hat in the ring and show my perspective on why it is I choose to invest in silver. Now I touched on this a little bit uh, back in my initial video when the breaking into the silver community, but I thought that this topic was important enough that it deserved its own video. So I started looking at why it is that I invest in silver. It's because, honestly, I feel like our dollar is being constantly watered down. Every day, our dollar is worth less and less. However, silver has been a very constant variable. So, I don't like to hold on to dollars. I don't think that having $50,000 in a bank account is really doing anything for me. Because while it may be gaining 1% interest in the bank, the 1% is greatly offset by the by how much the dollar loses its value. So actually by putting money in the bank, in a sense you're losing money. You're losing the purchasing power that that dollar had the year prior. So I started buying some silver, and a good way to look at why it is that I bought silver is I looked up and then gas in 1964 cost about 24 to 27 cents a gallon on average. Nowadays, gas is up to just over $4 a gallon depending on where you live. So I started thinking about that. Why is gas, is gas more rare nowadays? Is, uh, the, does the price of gas, did the price of gas go up due to more use? Why, why is it that gas has gone from 20 cents a gallon all the way to over $4 a gallon? Back then the median wage was $1.25 an hour, the minimum wage rather, was $1.25 an hour. Today it's upwards of $8. Is it because people are working harder for their money? No, it's because our money is worth less. So let's go back and look at that gasoline example. For 24 cents, I could buy a gallon of gas. That would equate to about two silver dimes, which I have here. Now, two silver dimes would buy a gallon of gas. Today, the same amount of silver that's in those dimes would also buy a gallon of gas because they're selling for a little over $2 a piece. So, it's not that gasoline is more expensive, because I can still buy the same amount of gas with the same amount of silver. What's really happened is that our dollar has become worth drastically less over the years, and is going to continue to do so. Now, I like to look at the paper that we print every year. Is it really worth anything? No. All it is is a promise backed by the government that, our one, that one dollar is worth a dollar that a quarter is worth a quarter, and they can print this out of thin air. It's nothing more than a promise that it is worth a dollar. I have some issues with that, but it also it can also be okay. Now the reasons behind that is because a dollar will always be worth a dollar. A quarter will always be worth a quarter. But the question is, what kind of purchasing power will that dollar or the quarter have a year from now? If we continue to print money out of thin air instead of using tangible assets like we did back in the day, we're constant, all we're really doing is defacing money and making it worth less. I'd like to talk about three different kinds of investors that I see. I see a short-term investor, a medium-term investor, and an investor who's just looking to trade in their federal-issued um, money, or promise of a money, rather, for real wealth. Now the first kind of investor I don't think is really going to be watching this channel. The first kind of investor I see is more of somebody who's going to be playing the stocks. They're going to buy silver at $30 an ounce. Once it hits $30.10 an ounce, they're going to sell it all, make a quick dollar, and move on with their life. The medium term investor is somebody who I see as buying, let's say, 100 ounces of silver at $30 an ounce with the mindset that as soon as it hits $60 an ounce, they're going to cash it all in and go buy other goods that they didn't buy with the silver in the first place. Now, that's sort of a scary thing if you think about it. For simplicity terms, I'll say that, let's just say I bought one ounce of silver today at $30 an ounce with the mindset that as soon as it doubles, I'm going to go cash it in and go buy something else. So, let's say instead of buying a really nice shirt for $30, I decide to go out and buy a one ounce of silver and then buy two shirts once it hits $60 an ounce. Now, 10 years later, silver hits $60 an ounce, and I go and I trade in my one ounce of silver, and they give me $60. I'm feeling good. I feel like, yes, I've doubled my profit. But 
what I did is I traded in my one ounce of silver for more government issued promises of money. Now, what you need to think about there is that, sure, maybe I doubled my money, but have I doubled my purchasing power? And I think that's what a lot of people don't think about, is because now that I have my $60, and I'm going down to the store to buy two shirts instead of one that I could have bought 10 years ago, when I get to the store, I'm taken back. I see that the shirt is now selling for $55, $60, and I think, well, what the heck? I'm supposed to be able to buy two shirts now that the price of silver has doubled. But while the price of silver has doubled, the purchasing power is the same. The same in which when you look back at the gas um, scenario, where gas is 20 cents a gallon, and I, if I would have held on to the two dimes that I had, thinking, you know, yes, now it's, you know, this price of silver has gone up drastically, I can still only buy the same gallon of gas with the same silver. So the price of silver has stayed relatively the same. Or the purchasing power, excuse me, the purchasing power of silver has stayed relatively the same while the price has inflated. So what I caution people is not to be a, a, um, a medium-term investor. Don't set, you know, don't say that as soon as it hits, you know, it doubles, I'm going to go buy all this stuff because you really need to think about what is the purchasing power doing. And honestly, it's probably not doing a whole lot. Now, granted, if I were to take that $30 that I was going to buy a nice shirt with, and not invested it in silver, but rather just put the $30 in the bank and said, I'll buy it later. I'm going to be a lot worse off because I've actually lost half the purchasing power of my $30. When I go try to buy that $60 shirt, I'm going to only have $30, and it's just a bad scenario. So while the medium-term investor has still preserved their wealth, their purchasing power has not doubled like the mindset that I think a lot of people have. So I sort of looked at this myself, and I, I'm going to call it the wave runner theory. If I really want a wave runner today, while I'm young, I'm going to go enjoy it during the summertime and just have a blast. I feel like I should go purchase this. I should enjoy my life. I should enjoy the purchasing power that the dollar has today. And as opposed to investing that $5,000 in silver, waiting 10 years, feeling, you know, having the mindset that I've doubled my money, but in reality, the price of the wave runner has also doubled. So really all I've done is putting, put off purchasing the wave runner putting off 10 years of owning it, 10 years of enjoyment for something that um, I could have had 10 years ago and really experienced it. So I think that's something that we all need to be cautious of. So what I like to do, as opposed to spending every dollar that I make at my work in silver, I take what I didn't spend for the month and put that into silver. That way I'm not losing money in the bank, but rather preserving my wealth in silver. But at the same time, like I said, I'm not putting every dollar that I've earned into silver, but rather enjoying my life. And I think that's something we really need to think about, is that we, instead of getting so caught up in investing in silver and, you know, thinking about that, we need to think about whether or not we're really enjoying our life. I think that it's important that instead of going out and, you know, you don't, we don't want to be 90 years old on our deathbed thinking, oh, look at all this wealth that I've preserved but I didn't really have any fun with my life. I guess that's my scenario anyways. I'd rather spend some money as I have it with the purchasing power that it has now because it's not really going to change if I were to put it into silver. So I hope that, that kind of makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, let me know. I guess I can try to make a different video and explain it better. Please don't get upset with me saying, oh, the purchasing power of silver is going to go way up because it very well could. I'm not going to pretend like I know the future. But what I'm saying is I'm looking into the past. And again, back to the same two dimes at the gas story. I could have saved the silver, and I'm still going to be able to buy the same amount of gas today. Maybe I should have spent it all back then. Maybe I shouldn't have. Who's, who am I to say what we should all do? And please don't take investment, um, please don't take investment advice from me, because I'm just telling you what I plan on doing. What I plan on doing is taking what money I don't spend throughout the month, not putting it into a bank, but rather putting it into something more, st more stable, such as precious metals. So thanks for watching, guys, and keep stacking.